right. I'm going to try and break down your journey in my mind. So when did you start jiu-jitsu? Uh, I was 13. Okay, so young. So at 13, you started jiu-jitsu. You went to, you said, the best university in Finland. And also yeah. I think uh, Scandinavia has the highest, like the education system is like very, very good there, yeah. right? They have the very high, highest level of education. So if you to even go to that university, you're obviously not as, as dumb as me. So it's, it's fine. Uh, we, we got to a, sp a point here where at uni you left because it was full of geeks, started doing doors. Then you moved on to now being in your email marketing. When did you see the opportunity to move into SMS, what 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 highlighted it to you? Because I think I think I know the answer, so I'll try and round it up. Because I believe when you started in email marketing, it was like the gold rush and like easy. Well, well we started a little bit too late. Like okay. uh, the gold rush was like uh, actually like uh, when I was like ten, like from two thousand to two thousand like twelve. That was like the golden years, and before. Like in the two thousand early two thousands, you could just deliver anything, and people were just sending like Viagra and all kinds of shit, and everything was working. So we came a little bit too late to that, but we still managed to make some decent money and like get a lot of connections. And then basically one day we just we heard that this, like uh, that SMS marketing is the thing, and then we just took one file of data in Australia, if I remember correctly, and then we sent it, and we saw like just the numbers going up, and I was like, okay. So we're making like ten times more with this than in the in the in the, in the email, and then we just f switched focus on like instantly that. So you switched completely from email to SMS yeah. just by seeing the numbers. Yeah, just oh. like pretty much overnight. We did like maybe it was maybe like six six months overlapping, lapping a little bit, but the amount of work we needed to do in like to make the same money with the email was just like ridiculous compared to the SMS. But this was like the golden age of S SMS, so that was exactly when everybody started to be able to do purchases on mobile and so we hit exactly the right time then yeah so that was maybe the beginning of smartphones yeah. Or, yeah, yeah 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 okay okay so then i'm guessing it became harder to send now because i've done a little bit of email marketing not a lot but now i understand like for me you all know the numbers way better than me but if you're sending let's say a hundred thousand emails you, you, you do things by the million so let's do it by yeah. the million you send a million emails like, what's the open rate on someone sending me? If you send out to a million co contacts, how many people are actually even going to open that email? Well, if you're lucky, then you have like, well, if if you're sending like transactional, that hey, like here's your UPS tracking thing, then then it comes to like 30, 40 percent. This, but in the marketing case, like over 10 percent is like almost impossible nowadays. Wow. Okay. But in SMS, it's like everybody reads their SMS, so it's like if if you think like. How how do you usually if you get the UPS package that you're trying to trying to track you will get get the notifications with your phone, like phone is then like that is the new computer that we have like if if you would compare the time of how much people spend time on their computers against how much time they spend on their phones, so you basically live with your phone, mm. so that's where the, all the communication is coming. I, did, in. I think it was you that said this to me, and it's the one that highlighted it most to me the difference between email marketing and sms marketing is if a volcano erupts or you have an earthquake in your city you don't get an email telling you to yeah. evacuate yeah, yeah exactly you get a text saying let's get out yeah and you not only get a text you get also a voice call so like the u.s government like if you have uh they go they have these things called amber alert alerts so like i was in the miami beach and we got an like alert to my phone that hey somebody shot like 500 meters from you like, okay so that is like how the US government is actually pushing these alerts that go like past all the systems and they go directly to your phone. It's like a notification that goes past everything. But uh, when you look at like if you really want to reach somebody and that is how where our platform comes around. So if you really want to reach somebody, well, let's say that you really, really need to get get on hold of somebody, you call them and you SMS them as much as you need to get them to pick up. So that's basically what, what we knew do nowadays. So we combine like the calls and the SMS and the voicemails. So basically any communication that is coming to your phone. So that is that is how we how we nowadays run the marketing things. Okay, so if I want just again, I want I've got a product, whatever the product is, I want to sell it. You've got the traditional way, maybe I don't know if you maybe it, I'm I'm again young in this, but the traditional way would be an email marketing campaign. 
some social media or whatever, would you consider SMS a traditional way of marketing a product or a more new version or it's well, still traditional? Well, SMS is an old, old way, but it's kind of like... Um, you, you cannot really like nowadays when when the things have become like compliant and shit like you cannot really come come go and just take like hey I, here's like one million of data i start blasting as sms to it but how we should look at this is like when we talk about the email open rate and it's 10 percent. so when you have a list of people that are interested in your product so and you want to reach them you want to either communicate with them or you want to sell something to them or you want them to make some action so do you want to use the tool that gets like the 10% open rate or do you want to use, use the tool that gets 97% open rate? So that is basically the question. And especially you can combine it with, with calls. Like if you, want to sell some, if you want to sell somebody something, like let's, let's take an example. You're, do, you're pushing Facebook leads. You're marketing, let's say, solar panels. You, you're a guy from Ohio. You go, you put your, put your information there. Like, oh, I want to save from my electricity bill. So what happens next? And this is where we come, where my company comes in. So you will start getting immediately, the second you put, put your phone number to that form, you will get immediately phone calls, SMS messages, like, hey, we have your solar panel off already. Please press one to connect to our agent. Hey, then you get an SMS, hey, first name, your, like, your solar market, no solar like offer is pending for your action. Please call us right away. So. What, what you need to do is you need, when you get the person that you already spent the money and you know that they're interested and you need to convert them to your product and you need to sell them something, you cannot just send them email like, hey, here's the offer, please press this link and put your credit card in there. You need to do all that you can to get them to purchase or take the action. And sometimes it means that you send them like, 15 calls and 15 SMS messages, but people are retarded and they need repetition. <laughs> I think that was, uh, you know Alex Hormozzi, I'm guessing obviously, yeah. but that's in his new book about <coughs> $100 million leads. He says one of the biggest uh, mistakes by young entrepreneurs is they believe once they've messaged a warm lead once and they haven't got a response from it, they see it as a dead lead. And he's like, I'll message these guys 27 times. And if they don't respond, I'll message them again. Because that, because you're, you're being very, yeah, he was very nice about it. And he said, you know, maybe they you know, when you get a text, maybe you're driving, maybe there's so many things you could be doing, you, you forget about it, whatever. And I found that when I, because I was marketing a product um, via socials and I had the same thing. I, when someone responded to me, or someone read it and left me on scene, you know, worst thing that could happen especially if it's a girl you're like oh my god mm. but you're left on scene is like you, you feel like oh, they're not interested but it doesn't mean they're not interested it just means they're not interested in that moment right so you do you have a policy on how many times you'll contact that person well until they purchase or on the, until they unsubscribe okay so that that is exactly like if if you look at like the mathematics of this so let's say let's take the solar panel example your, your company that is selling solar panels, you're paying like 30 bucks a lead to get them from Google or Facebook. And then one SMS message costs you like a couple of pen, like less than a penny. And one voice call costs you like also less than a penny. So there's 35 bucks you paid to get the, get the guy to put his information in the form. So how much money would, you, would be like reasonable to put to make him to actually purchase? Well, as much as needed, because if you, if you would put like, like $2 worth of marketing, then with that you will get like 100, of, 100 phone calls, 15 MMS messages, and like 1,000 SMS. So it's like, it's ridiculous how much, how much money you spend to the front-end marketing, and then you don't push basic delete to convert. 